Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to talk about how I found success 3D printing plastic gears that are strong and durable. A lot of people seem to instantly dismiss the idea of 3D printed plastic gears, but if designed and printed correctly, they actually work extremely well. Today I'll talk to you about how you can design your own gears from scratch, some printing tips and tricks you can use to add strength, and which material you can use to achieve the best results. Keep in mind, this is just what has been the best solution for me and my projects through my own experience. So if anyone has any suggestions or ways that I can improve this design, please leave a comment down below. So I've spent the best part of a year developing my Raptor 2 project, which is a unique RC car that I designed and 3D printed myself. A huge part of this project was research and development around the drivetrain and solving challenging problems in regards to transferring all that power through 3D printed parts down to the wheels. My designs for these power units materialised when I started thinking about how I could design an RC car that was true all wheel drive. I hadn't seen anything like this out there in the RC community so I thought it'd be interesting to give it a try. The design started off simple with some test rigs to assess the feasibility of 3D printed gears. I also explored the possibility of using belt drive but I decided against this in the end because it didn't really fit with the design of the car and there were a lot of belt slippage issues. Over time the designs progressed and I essentially ended up building the car around this power unit. The motors are around 5,500 RPM but I'm using a 5 to 1 gear ratio which massively increases the torque at the wheel and gives the car way more acceleration. Another thing I tried which I very quickly abandoned was 3D printing the axles. With the sheer amount of torque involved in this project this just is not feasible so I decided it'd be better to stick with steel axles and have those connect to 3D printed couplers. To design my gears I use a Fusion 360 add-on called GF Gear Generator. It's a brilliant tool that lets you create gears like this in seconds. If you're interested in how you can design your own gears in Fusion 360, I've made a separate video for that so be sure to click the card in the top right of the screen. For those who don't use Fusion 360, I also created a separate free car tutorial on how to create simple spur gears. So now that we're in Fusion 360, let's talk about which gears are best for practical 3D printing applications. There are so many different types of gears that you can choose from and each has their own advantages and disadvantages. I won't go through all of them but I'll highlight a few of the key differences for you. The left set of gears are spur gears. These are usually the gear that most people are familiar with. While spur gears are generally regarded as the most efficient type of gear, they're not ideal for power transmission. Spur gears are typically used in low speed applications that don't involve high loads or stress. This is because the small surface area of the teeth make them more vulnerable to damage and wear in high stress situations. The middle set of gears are helical gears. These are ideal for high load applications and provide maximum power transfer. The teeth of a helical gear have a large surface area and the helical pattern causes each of the teeth to gradually mesh. This distributes forces more evenly across the teeth, making it much stronger than a spur gear. The third set of gears on the right are a pair of herringbone gears. A dual helical gear or a herringbone gear is essentially a doubled up helical gear. A dual helical gear usually has a gap between the two helices, whereas a herringbone gear meets them directly in the middle. A herringbone gear is most definitely our best choice here for 3D printing, because the two opposite helices cancel out any axial forces created by the gear. The absence of any axial forces is important for 3D printed gears because it reduces wear, allowing the teeth to last much longer. So now let's take a look at the gears I designed for Raptor 2. You can see here that in my final design I've split both axles away from the spur gear. These can be inserted and glued afterwards. The reason for this is to optimize strength through print orientation. The key to maximizing strength with FDM 3D printing is to print your parts in such a way that the layers are perpendicular to the forces that are going to be acting on them. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is the same gear in Prusa Slicer, except now we have the axle attached to the gear itself. Now that we can see this in the slicer, it should help you understand what I'm talking about in regard to print orientation. This orientation for the gear and the teeth themselves is perfect because the forces applied to the teeth are perpendicular to the layers. This visual demonstration should really help you understand that concept. As the teeth mesh, the strength of the teeth is built across multiple layers as opposed to a single layer, meaning that they're much stronger. Now there's a big problem with including the axle with the spur gear. 
While the gear and the teeth are optimized for strength in this orientation, the axles are not. This can work when you have no load on the gear or the axle, but as soon as you have a load and a larger reactionary force, the layers on the axle will split and pop off. It's for this very reason that the axles and the gear need to be separate parts. By printing the axles separately, you have much more control over print orientation. What I tend to do is split the parts in half using Prusa Slicer and then glue them back together once they're printed. This works very well creating a gear and axle that are optimized for strength and durability. I also recommend that you print each of your spur and pinion gears one at a time. This will give you a cleaner finish on the teeth and you won't have to worry about oozing or retraction which are common issues when printing multiple parts at once. Given that I'm using a 5 to 1 gear ratio, my pinion gear is very small. This caused me quite a lot of breakage issues where the pinion would just snap off. One thing I did to drastically improve this was to reinforce the pinion gear with an M3 bolt. This helped tremendously and I haven't had any breakages since. Here are my final spur and pinion gears. I recommend that you print any smaller parts such as pinions or axles at 100% infill because it's going to give you the best durability. Given that the spur gear is larger and I'm mindful of weight reduction, I decided to print those between 20 and 50% infill. The outer perimeter of the print where the teeth are is quite thick anyway, and this is another setting that you can play around with in your slicer. So now let's talk about the best material I've found for 3D printing gears. During my research and development for Raptor 2, I tried PLA, PETG and polycarbonate. PLA and PETG might work in some cases where an application has low torque. But in this particular project, the car is heavy and has direct drive to each wheel. This required engineering grade materials and thankfully there are companies out there like Polymaker who manufacture materials like this. The material I used to print these gears is Polymax Polycarbonate. This material is incredibly strong and I was able to print these on a Prusa Mark III. To achieve the best results with Polycarb, it's recommended to have a 3D printer enclosure and I'd agree with that, especially for large prints. To print these gears, I didn't use an enclosure, but I did use Ultra Hole Hairspray to assist with bed adhesion. This worked perfectly fine and I was able to print the gears. For additional strength, Polymaker also recommend annealing the printed parts for two hours after printing. You can find more details and data sheets for this filament on the Polymaker website. Special thanks to Polymaker who are the sponsor of this video. Not only are they now sponsoring this video, but also all of my content and my future projects. Anyone who knows anything about Polymaker, you'll know that they're a premium brand filament and I'm really honored and grateful that they're willing to support the channel and put their brand alongside mine. So I really appreciate it, thank you. If you decide to buy any Polymaker products from their website, be sure to use my discount code, the hardware guy, so you can save 10%. So let's get back to the video. My final advice for increasing the longevity of 3D printed gears is to use roller bearings and silicone lubricant. This will reduce friction between plastic parts and stop your axles from wearing away. I prefer roller bearings because they provide more stability to the axles and it helps the gear sit in its correct position. So that's it for this one. I hope you've learned something from my six to eight months of experimentation doing this. I'd love to see some of you use these techniques in some of your own projects. And as I said at the start of the video, if you find ways to improve it or add strength, let me know in the comments below because I'm always looking to improve my own designs. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to quickly reach out and ask for your support. If you appreciate these videos that I put out for free on YouTube, please consider becoming a website member to support me. My biggest goal is to do this full time and keep inspiring people through teaching and sharing my own projects. You can help make this a reality by becoming a website member and I'd really appreciate it. In return for your membership, you gain access to my Fusion 360 for Beginners course. You also get access to my 3D CAD files for all of my projects. And finally, you'll gain access to the members only Discord channel where you can hang out with the other members and ask me questions. All links to these web pages I'll put in the description down below. Any support would be massively appreciated. Thank you and back to the video.